Hello and welcome to the Car Canada channel. In today's video, we're going to go over Toyota hybrid drive modes, including EV mode. A lot of my viewers have asked, what is the best mode to drive in and what are the pros and cons of each mode? But before we get started, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some of my other videos. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for watching another one of my videos. And without further ado, let's dig right into it. A small overview before we get started in the drive modes. So in total, there are four drive modes. Some of the very older hybrid models did not have these drive modes, but most of them do. So the, the drive modes are sport or power in some models. Then there is normal, there's eco, and then there's EV mode. We're gonna talk about each one in detail, but I just wanna tell you one thing about all these drive modes. There is no moving parts. There is no significant changes and devices that control these. Folks, this is all just software. It just changes the way the computers handle the hybrid system to produce a different feel to the car. So having said that, let's dig into the first one. Let's start with eco mode. So eco mode obviously stands for economy. And what, what the hybrid computer is gonna do in this case is prioritize fuel economy over performance. Wait a second, did I just say performance in a hybrid car? Yes. Something about electric motors. Electric motors, unlike a gasoline engine, they have instant torque. They don't have a torque curve. They don't need to rev up, go up in RPM. They have instant torque from zero to 100% torque and then back to zero. That's just how they are designed, how they work. So some of these hybrids, believe it or not, they take off pretty good because of the electric motors. Now, there are no Tesla or any of the other stuff, but they're okay. So economy mode, the, the computer is going to prioritize economy, obviously, for fuel economy and emissions, but it's going to do that by reducing the throttle response, especially on takeoff. Now, when you press the gas and you're in eco mode, it's going to, the car is going to feel very slow to take off because it's trying to optimize your takeoff, not according to your demand, no, according to what's best to get the best fuel economy. So ideally, the best time to use eco mode is when you're really trying to conserve and get that top high mileage, high fuel mileage that you're trying to show off to your buddies because some of these hybrids will easily exceed their advertised miles per gallon number. Now, a disadvantage to eco mode is mm, can be pretty slow. Things get very slow and very just if you're an impenshit driver like myself, I get very aggravated with eco mode. So my advice is, and what I do when I drive hybrids, I usually like to use eco mode on the highway. It seems to be better. You don't feel it as much. Yeah, the throttle response is less, but on the highway, the car is already moving. You're really not accelerating very fast. While when driving in city, you're always stopping, going, stopping, going. It gets frustrating because it's really in your way. Of course, if it doesn't bother you, it's, it's made to prioritize fuel economy over everything else. So it doesn't bother you, leave it in eco mode. One thing about eco mode, some of the newer hybrids will have an eco mode for the HVAC. When you engage eco mode, it'll automatically engage that eco HVAC. So it's gonna run the HVAC system in an economic mode. So it's not gonna put high demand and now Everything, everything is working much harder and now your gas mileage comes down and it's gonna prioritize economy over performance of the HVAC system. So that automatically comes on with eco mode as well on the models that are equipped with it, of course. Let's talk about sport mode or power mode. Now, this mode is the opposite of eco mode, obviously, as this name says, you're uh, driving down the street, and you're late for work and you're within the speed limits, but you really need to get going. Or you're merging into a highway and you find yourself going too slow on, on the on-ramp and you really need to pick up your pace to catch up with traffic. 
this is the time to engage sport mode or power mode. It's going to prioritize performance over a fuel economy. It's going to sharpen up the throttle response and in some actually in some of the newer cars it's even going to change the steering feel. Use that mode basically when you're trying to get the most performance out of your hybrid. Obviously your gas mileage will come down. You can't and this is the most common asked question. Is driving in this mode going to harm my car? It is not. However, in this mode, you're going to feel the engine's very rev happy. The car loves to fly off as, as fast as it can. So in this mode, most people tend to push their car beyond their limits. So my advice to you is we're not speed racers all the time. We have our moments where we'd like to take off pretty quick. Try to minimize the use of sport mode unless you feel in a situation where you need it. Like you feel like I need to take off faster. Switch sport mode or power mode. Use it to where when you need it to take off quicker and then go back. Because there's no reason to drive normally. You're just driving in traffic or driving at steady speed on the highway and you're in sport or power mode. I don't see the advantage of that. So that's, that mode could be for that one day where you feel like you're spirited driving or you're just in a hurry or you find yourself in a situation. That's the time to use sport mode. Otherwise, I don't see a benefit to it. I mean, hybrids are not meant to be performance cars. They're not fast. They're very efficient and they're great at what they do. But sport mode, power mode gives you that extra push when you need it. Let's talk about normal mode. Now, normal mode typically doesn't need explanation, but let me give you my input on normal mode. So we talked about eco mode on one side and then power mode or sport mode. You notice that they're exact opposites. Well, on one side, you have extreme fuel saving and extreme economy, very low throttle response. And on the other side of the spectrum, you have the madman or very fast guy that wastes all his gas. Well, normal mode is a perfect medium. It's going to give you the best of two worlds. It's going to give you enough throttle response where things are not very dire acceleration wise. And it's also going to prioritize fuel economy a little bit. It's not going to go to town where you're exceeding the, the advertised number for the car, but it's going to give you very good gas mileage. So my recommendation is for normal driving, everyday driving, use normal mode because that's the best balance where you're not going to usually not going to find yourself in a situation where the car is too slow or your gas mileage dipped too much. The idea here is I recommend you use normal mode for city driving, for everyday driving, unless you have that one situation where you need more response from the car, then switch it to power mode, then go back to normal mode. Pros and cons for normal mode. There is really every pro, but no cons because normal mode prioritizes both and the gas mileage you can get in, in normal mode is pretty impressive. So I wouldn't consider it as a con that you're losing gas mileage. I also wouldn't consider it as a con because the car is too slow. It's remember, it's the best of two worlds. And I would recommend you most of the time drive in normal mode. Let's talk about the coveted EV mode, the one that people often don't understand or just don't see the point off. And guess what? I am with you on that because supposedly EV mode will put your car in electric only. But guess what? The car sometimes will go into EV mode on its own. When the battery is full charged, the engine is warmed up and you're stopped, it goes into EV mode on its own. So Toyota's idea, and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to quote here from, from their script, the idea of EV mode is if you're waking up in the morning and you're driving through the neighborhood and you don't want to make noise or you're in a closed parking lot and there's not very good ventilation and you'd like to create no emissions, basically have the engine not running, you're creating zero emissions at that point. That's their idea. It's not to take a cruise down the street because most of these EV modes will disengage up to 20 miles an hour. Yeah you can really squeeze it a little bit faster but around 20 miles an hour is it range wise if you push it the advertised number is between 0.5 and 0.6 miles yes some people have gotten more some people have gotten less but 
it's not meant to be go 20 miles on this mode. It's just meant for short drives and that's about it. But there are so many things that would disable EV mode. And, and the famous message is EV mode not available. People always wonder, okay, well, then why is this button here if it's always not available? Well, if your engine is cold, it's not available. If the hybrid battery is way too cold, it's not available. If the hybrid battery is too hot, it's not available. If your defroster is on, it's not available. If you're going too fast, it's not available. So you see, there are a lot of conditions that really you can't use EV mode in. In my opinion, the ideal place to use EV mode, although the hybrid system will usually automatically go into EV mode, especially in the newer ones. The newer ones seem to be better about doing that. But let's say you're in a drive-through waiting for to pick up your food. That's a good time to use EV mode because you're crawling. You're not, you're not really going fast. And ideally, using EV mode in temperatures that are mild. It's not too hot, it's not too cold. Maybe springtime, fall, those summer days where it's not very hot or those winter days that it's really nice. That's, those are the best time to use EV mode in a drive-through or around a parking lot or if you're just moving your car in your, in your garage. I don't know, some people have a bigger garage where they could move their car a little bit forward or back to open the back door or something of that nature. You switch in EV mode, the engine doesn't start, you move it a little bit. And that's, that's the basic idea of EV mode. Let's answer some frequently asked questions and misconceptions about these drive modes. First one is, people ask, if I put my car in sport mode, I love the way it drives in sport mode, I don't care about my gas mileage, I leave it in sport mode, but every time I get back in my car and start it again, it goes back to normal. Well, that's normal. That's the way they are designed. The only time it will save your drive mode is if you're in normal or eco. If you're in eco when you shut off the car, and the next time you start it, it's going to still be in eco mode. That's the way they designed it. They don't want you to put it in sport and then forget it. And now you're wasting, you're creating high emissions and wasting all your gas. They'd rather put you back in normal mode and you manually switch it into sport or power mode. That's one thing that gets people. It's like, why is it switching out on its own? No, it will switch out of sport every time you turn off the car and back but it'll stay in eco if you are in eco mode. The next frequently common question is, will I harm my hybrid if I keep switching modes? To make a long story short, no. You can't harm anything. The car won't let you. This, this hybrid system is too smart to let you harm the car. Now, drive in, within reason, of course. Now, drive the car in sport mode all day long, pedal to the metal, the engine is always revving, the hybrid system is always maxed out. Yes, you're going to cause harm, but you will also cause harm if you do that in a non-hybrid car, obviously, all day long. Eco mode and normal mode, there's really no harm you can do. This is all, folks, there's no moving parts here. It's all software, it's all programming. Yes, I know you hear the engine rev up in power mode or sport mode, and then everything kind of comes down and becomes very, very nice and quiet and humble in eco mode, but it's all software. All the computer is doing is changing its program to prioritize a different thing. So there's no moving parts here. There is nothing changing. There's no added, there's no, problems that could happen from switching in drive modes. It's all software. There's The software is set. It's not like your uh, window computer where things go south of the software. No, this is a software that worked, that has worked for years without a single issue. So use it as you need it. Don't overthink it. Use it in the situation that you need and you'll have no issues. So let me recap real quick, which mode I recommend you use in which condition. Just, I'm give, just giving you an idea. You could come up with your own ways to use drive modes that suit your driving style, but I'll give you some ideas that I found really useful from my testing. So normal mode is really your normal, your everyday mode where you don't want to think about it. You just want to sit in the car and drive and you're just driving. You're not, you don't need extra demand or nothing. Just put it in normal mode for most of the time. Let's say 
you're driving in city or highway steady driving where you're not stop go stop go and then merging in traffic and doing all these all these situations then use eco mode because you're going to save a lot of gas and the car will be very economical and in those cases usually when you're steadily cruising you're not really demanding much acceleration wise and if if the opportunity comes where you do need to accelerate it'll accelerate it's not like it's not going to accelerate but not rapidly so if you're driving on a country road or on a highway and you're slowly accelerating to just increase your speed or decrease your speed that's perfect for eco mode because you don't need high demand sport mode i would use it as needed i typically don't advise that you use sport mode all the time because you're most people are not comfortable using sport mode or power mode because the engine is rubbing up all the time and they just don't see the need for it. But I'll tell you, use sport mode or power mode because in those one situation or two that you encounter during your drive where you really need to take off, you're merging into a highway, you came too slow and now you're, you're too slow to merge into traffic, use that mode and then go back to normal or eco as you see fit. So there you have it, guys. This is a basic explanation of these modes. Use these modes as you see fit. Don't fear anything. Don't think about it. Just use them as you need them. They're there to serve you in an awesome hybrid Toyota that you have. I hope this video was helpful and informative. I hope you liked it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel. May the Lord bless you and keep you. And you have a wonderful day.